Okay, what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about this the sine curve and where it comes from. And I'm only going to I'm going to restrict this little part over here. It says 0 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 pi. So this is basically we're doing this because we're going to talk about one revolution all the way around the circle. Right? So if I go if I go all the way around one time I've gone 2 pi. So I'm going from 0 to 2 pi. All right? So first things first, let's draw ourselves a coordinate plane that is restricted by our um, 0 to 2 pi. So it's going to look something like this. Got that part, and then I got this part. So with your rulers, go ahead and space these out. And I got this part right there. Axis on our coordinate plane. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all of the radian measures from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to hit, we're going to hit 0. We're going to hit pi over 2. We're going to hit pi. Talk about 3 pi over 2, and then come back to 2 pi. So we're going to go in increments of pi over 2. That's how we're going to label our axis. So I'm going to go every two points. This will be pi over 2. So I'm going to start at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Okay. That is one full revolution all the way around the unit circle. Is that making sense to you? Okay. All right, good. Now, if I'm dealing with the sine of x, okay, the sine function, if I take a if I take the x y coordinate plane here on the unit circle, which which variable deals with sine? Is it always x or is it always y? y. It's always y. Yeah. So I'm gonna highlight the y value for each of these, okay, in in blue. So all of these are now highlighted in blue, right? Those are the y's. So what's the sine of zero degrees? No. I mean, sorry. <laughs> yes, you're totally right. Um, before we do this though, it's gotta go up to positive one and down to negative one. Sorry, it's totally spaced out there. Up to positive 1 and down to negative 1. So the sine of 0, just like Daniel said, has a value of 0. What's the sine of pi over 2? If we travel around the unit circle, what's the sine of pi over 2? One. 1. So at pi over 2, we're going to be up here at 1. Do you see where this is going? Cool. How about pi? Let's travel around the unit circle. What's the sine of pi? 0. zero. So I'm back down here at 0. How about 3 pi over 2? Negative 1, so I'm down here at negative 1. All right. And then how about 2 pi? Back to 0. All right. Yeah, how many of you knew that, that that's where that, that curve comes from? Let the record show two people claim they knew. I did? Uh, uh, okay, yeah. So if you were to connect all these dots here with a nice smooth curve, what you'd see is this beautiful sort of trig function that just basically comes straight out of the unit circle. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you if you were to punch in all of these along the axis, right, all the y values, they make up, you know, and of course all the ones in between. These are just the nice values. But if you punch if you punch in all the y values, you get this nice beautiful curve here, right? All right. So let's answer a few basic questions about this curve. What would be the domain of this thing, on our restricted from zero to two pi? What would it be? All real It'd be all real numbers, right? How about the range? What's the highest value it gets to? And what's the lowest value it gets to? So there's a couple ways we could write that. How about negative 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1? Okay. Symmetry, right? Do you remember from yesterday, was sine an odd or an even function? Was odd. Sine was an odd function, which Im Im implies that there is symmetry about the origin. Odd function, so it has symmetry with the origin. All right. Origin means, uh, what does like being symmetrical with the origin actually mean? Yeah, what do you think, Daniel? Kind of almost like the x-axis, kind of reflected. Yeah, so I think of it kind of like this. Um, if I if I'm at the origin, if I go uh, to the right one unit and up, then I have to go to the left one unit and down. Those two points would have to be on the graph because they're symmetric about the origin. That's kind of how I, I view it. All right. All right. So um, with the trick with the sine function, it's symmetric about the origin because it's an odd function. Okay. Here's something interesting. Period. The period, right, is basically how long in radians does it take to go from start to finish? So what is that part that I just highlighted? How long does it take to go from start to finish of a cycle? Meaning I start at zero, I go up to one, go back to zero, then down to one, and finally start over again. What is that distance? Two pi. So therefore, the period for your sine function is a distance of two pi radians. All right, that's the question you ask. How long does it take to complete one full cycle? Okay, any x-intercepts that you can see right off the bat? 
Uh, zero. Yep, give me another one. Pi. Good, give me another one. Two pi. How can we sum this up? Whole, whole pi multiples. You got it. So the sine of 71 pi is going to be? What's the sine of 71 pi? Zero. What's the sine of 942 pi? Okay, yeah, every whole multiple of pi, right? Okay. Now, here's another interesting thing. If you think of these as quadrants, if you break these down into quadrants, okay, what you get here, right, in this, call this quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, okay? Notice in quadrant one and two, your sine curve is above the x-axis, so sine values must be positive in quadrant one and two. Pretty cool, huh? Then you go into quadrant three, sine curves are, uh, are negative in quadrant three, and the sine curve is below the x-axis, so they are negative in quadrants three and four. So not many people make that connection, but uh, if you break it up into quadrants, right? Now, the last part that we're talking about is increasing and decreasing, okay? Um, on the interval from zero to pi over two, your sine function is increasing. There's another spot. Anyone see where it is? Yeah, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. These are your increasing intervals, right? So from here all the way to here, it's increasing. And from here all the way to here, it's increasing, all right? And the way we write that would be like this, 0 to pi over 2. And we would not write it with brackets because at pi over 2, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's just sort of flat. So that means that the spaces in between, this stuff that I've highlighted in green, that must be the decreasing interval. From there to there. That's my decreasing interval. And that would be from pi over 2 all the way up to 3 pi. Alrighty. And in order to graph trig functions on the calculator, your calculator has to be in radian mode. So take a, a quick look and make sure your calculator is in radian mode. And mine happens to be. So I'll go back to y equals and I'll punch in the equation uh, sine of x. And then I want everybody in the room to hit zoom and then six. So we're all staring at the same picture. So how come the calculator screen looks different th than the one that I've created on my screen? What's different about it? The window's way bigger. You're absolutely right. So I want to teach you how to manipulate your window so that your, your calculator picture will look the same as the picture you've drawn by hand on the page. Here's how you do it. Let's go to window. And where's our x minimum? Where, is our, where are we starting on the x-axis? We're starting at 0. Good. Let's plug in 0. Where are we ending on our x-axis? 2 pi. So punch in a 2 and then second caret for pi. And as soon as you move down off of that, that line, your calculator automatically turns it into a fraction for you. I mean a decimal of 6.23, which is just 2 times pi. Okay, what scale are we using? What are the increments that we're going by? Pi over 2. Awesome. So we're going to second pi divided by 2. Push enter. What's the y minimum that I have on my graph? Negative 1. Good. Hit negative 1. And what's our y maximum? 1. So now we've set the parameters to match our picture. When we hit graph, check it out. The one on the calculator matches identically to the one on the screen. So we can, you know, we can check our drawings and answer questions from the calculator. Does that make sense to you guys? Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's a good skill to have. All right, so cosine of x, right? Um, do do does the x deal with cosine or does the y deal with cosine? X always represents cosine in our unit circle, right? So if I go here and I and I highlight all the x values, I'm gonna have a one, I'm gonna have a zero, I'm gonna have a negative one, then I'm gonna have a zero, and then back to a one again. So that lays the foundation for the for the five basic points of a cosine curve. So what's the cosine of zero radian? Uh, nope. It'd be one, yeah. It'd be one. What's the cosine of pi over two radian? Zero. What's the cosine of pi radian? Negative one, yes, very good. What's the cosine of three pi over two radian? Zero, good. What's the cosine of two pi radian? Back to one again. If you connect those, you get a nice looking beautiful cosine curve. Very, very similar to the sine curve, except it, it begins in a different spot, right? And of course, that's because of this right here. One of them is a one zero, one of them is, or one's a one, one's a zero.
All right, let's answer the basic questions about this. What's our domain on the parameter that we've been given here? All real numbers. The range, of course, negative 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1. Symmetry. Cosine is an even function, which implies that it is symmetric um, with the y-axis. So that means that on the left-hand side of the y-axis, I would have the exact same picture. It's like if I folded my graph on the y-axis, that's what I would get. All right. How about the period? How long does it take to go from start to finish? Two pi. Two pi. You got it. Nice job. And what are the intercepts that you can see? There you go. Odd multiples of uh, pi over 2. So 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. Those are going to be your intercepts for the cosine curve. Okay, let's talk about um, our decreasing. We're decreasing from 0 to pi. This is our decreasing interval. And our increasing interval goes from 0 all the way back up to 2 pi. This is our increasing interval. So we're decreasing from 0 to pi, and we're increasing from pi to 2 pi. So a little bit different than we had before. Half of it's decreasing, half of it's increasing. And uh, to graph it on the calculator, we can keep our window exactly the same, and we can just go back to y equals and punch in um, a cosine curve right below it. And if you want to make that distinguishable from the sine curve, you can go back below it before it and hit the enter button and make it a little bit thicker. And then we can compare both curves side by side. So what do you guys notice? You guys notice anything? They're the same, except one's just been moved over. Yeah, exactly right. So that's called a phase shift. We'll talk about that later on. And it's been moved over by exactly pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. A phase shift. Yeah, you got it. That is a cool name, huh? Okay, so since we have the calculator out, let's go back. Let's uh, clear everything off. And let's, uh, let's talk about the funkiest uh, function of them all. I know, that was amazing. So if you punch in tangent of x, and let's hit zoom 6. And that looks pretty. Wait, a positive pi over 2. All right, so let's draw. Okay, is everybody caught up to this point? Okay. Let me ask you a question here. Um, look at your bite size and tell me what's the tangent of zero? What would the tangent of zero be? Tangent of zero. No, no, tangent of zero. It's sine over cosine. What's the sine value? No, the sine value is zero divided by who cares? It's going to be what? So the tangent of zero must be zero. Good. So we know, we know this point, huh? What? Oh, oh, you did. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Okay, what's halfway between 0 and pi over 2? What's halfway between 0 and 90 degrees? Pi over 4. Now, why is pi over 4 so nice? Because in tangent, pi over 4 is 1. So exactly. So here's what I'm going to do. If I go up to here, put 1, and go put negative 1, I know at pi over 4, the tangent has to be an output value of 1. And I know negative pi over 4, the tangent value has to be an output of negative 1. And I know that I have asymptotes over here at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 because that's where the cosine is 0. So my graph has to be doing something that looks like this. Kind of crazy, huh? So let's make the calculator match my picture. Let's go to my window. And let's go. My x minimum is going to be negative pi over 2. So negative pi divided by 2. My x maximum is going to be positive pi over 2. So pi divided by 2. My scale, what's my scale, you guys? It's uh, pi over 4. Pi over 4, yeah. I just noticed that I'm missing a pi over 4 on that left-hand side. Uh, what's my minimum for my y? Negative. I'm going to go negative 2 so I, can make, so I can see it a little bit better. And then how about my x maximum or my y maximum? 2, yes, very good. All right, so when I hit graph, now what's on my computer screen should match exactly what's on what I what I drew freehand, and you can see that it does, okay? So the cool thing about the tangent function is it's always increasing, right? It's always increasing. This should be pi over 4. Yeah, it's funky, super funky.